in one of the earlier videos, we were looking at the structure of the chromosome and we noticed that the chromosome has uh, a few different structures. They have the centromere, telomeres, and the genes. So in that previous video, I said that we will be talking about the telomere in a later time. That time has now come. Now, before we talk about telomeres in detail, we want to start ourselves with a simple situation. Okay, and this is a question that I love to ask my students. Now, imagine if you took a skin cell out of a person's uh, body, right? And a skin cell is a very interesting cell that can undergo mitosis if it wants to, if you stimulate it to undergo mitosis. Now, if you were to put the skin cell in a Petri dish and you were to stimulate the skin cell to undergo mitosis, you give it all the nutrients and substances it requires, the cell will undergo mitotic cell cycle repeatedly. Okay, So it just basically undergoes mitosis. From one skin cell, it produces two, four, eight, and it just keeps going on. Now, but the question is, does it go on forever? And does it just continue undergoing mitosis? Now, some of my students say yes, but my other students will say no, because they will run out of nutrients in the Petri dish, which is a pretty good answer, all right? But then I'll ask my students another question where I say, assume that the nutrients were not a limiting factor. So we assume that the nutrients were constantly there. There was sufficient nutrient for all the cells. Will the cell then continue to undergo mitosis until you have a colony of skin cells growing like a monster covering the floor? Or it's just basically growing mitosis and it's just the colony of skin cells is becoming larger and larger and larger until it covers the entire earth. Well, the thing is, it doesn't because assuming that a cell, we start off with the cell as the first generation and every time it undergoes mitosis, it becomes the second generation, so third generation, so on and so forth. Um, when the cell, especially a skin cell, reaches, for example, the 20th generation, all right, the cell will just die. Now, the cell dies not because of a lack of nutrient, it just does, okay? I use 20th generation as an example. Different cells will start to die at different generations. Now the question is, why? There seems to be a limit to how many times a cell can undergo the mitotic cell cycle, okay? So it will undergo the mitotic cell cycle once, twice, thrice, continue uh, four times, five, six, seven, until it reaches a certain generation where the cells will die off. So the question here is, what is actually causing the limit for the cells to not continue undergoing mitosis? That limit comes in the form of telomeres. Now, what exactly are telomeres then? Telomeres are basically the ends of a chromosome made up of repeating bases. And where are they located? Like I said, it's in the end of the chromosomes. They can be at the end of the chromatin, where I'm highlighting it in yellow, or they can also be at the end of the chromatid, where I'm also highlighting it in yellow as well. Remember, the chromatin and chromatid are actually the same, except one is in their uncoiled form, which is the chromatin, and the chromatid is its supercoiled form. So one of the important questions here is, how do telomeres actually limit the mitotic cell cycle? So that's what we want to know in this particular video. So let's look at the mitotic cell cycle. Again, just a little bit of revision. Now, we always start off with a newly divided cell. I'm using skin cell as an example, but it can be any other cells like muscle cells, neurons, and such. Now, a newly divided cell will usually undergo interface. The interface is made up of the G1, S, and G2. And it becomes a mature cell ready for mitosis. The mature cell will undergo the M phase where mitotic division happens, the nucleus divides. And then cytokinesis happens where the cell divides to produce two newly divided cells. Now, assuming that the mitotic cell cycle happens twice, let's just focus on the cells that I've highlighted, okay? So when the mitotic cell cycles have uh, happened, the newly divided cells produce more newly divided cells, which produce more newly divided cells. Now, let's just focus on the three cells that I've highlighted, all right? And let's look at their chromatin. Now, if you remember, each of the newly divided cells are genetically identical, which means to say that 
the DNA in all these three cells or the chromosomes in all these three cells have to be exactly the same. However, when we look at these three newly divided cells in their first generation, second generation, and the third generation, okay, we notice something rather interesting. The chromatins are progressively becoming shorter. And if you remember, the telomere is at the end of the chromatin. So the telomere is actually becoming shorter. Now that's a rather peculiar thing that is happening, isn't it? Right? So there seems to be a loss of telomeres happening across the generations of the newly divided cells. The question is, why? So in the mitotic cell cycle, before a cell undergoes mitosis, the chromatins or the chromosomes will have to undergo DNA replication in the S phase. For some reasons that we do not have to delve into, DNA replication does not copy the chromosomes exactly 100%. All right? Now, what I mean by that is, every time DNA replication happens, the DNA is not replicated perfectly until the very end. The reason is because of the functions of DNA polymerase. I'm not going to elaborate on this, okay? But because of the imperfections in DNA replication, there will always be a little bit of DNA that is lost every time DNA replication occurs. And every time this DNA is lost, it leads to the loss of telomeres, right? And I'm just drawing it in a line, as you can see here, after DNA replication occurs, the replicated chromosomes are just slightly shorter. And when they're just slightly shorter, there is the loss of telomeres that is happening over that. So the question here is, are there any consequences when there is the loss of telomeres? Yep, there is a consequence to the loss of telomeres. Now, how? Let's imagine a cell in its first generation, okay? The first generation of cell or the parent cell, and the cell has its chromatin. Uh, I'm just drawing out the chromatin, and the highlighted parts represent the telomeres. Now, I'm also going to highlight some green parts over there, and those green parts are actually genes, okay? And that's a gene. Now, let's assume that a gene, the gene actually controls the function of the cell. It allows the cell to produce specific proteins, all right? And this gene, let's say, it allows the cell to produce ATP, which is an important energy molecule that the cell needs. This particular gene, highlighted in green color at the top there, it allows the cell to produce ATP, all right? So it's an important part of the DNA. When the cell produces the second generation and repeat the process to the third generation, the fourth and so forth, for example, until the fifth generation, let's see what happens to the telomeres. The telomeres progressively become shorter. Now, in the first, second and third generation, you notice that the telomeres are still intact even though they are progressively becoming shorter. But in the 15th generation, what has happened is the telomere is gone. And when the telomere is gone, the loss of DNA has now overflowed into the gene. Okay, so what do I mean by that is, in the first, second, and third generation, the gene is fine. Okay, but in the 15th generation, the gene is lost partially. Is this a bad thing? Yes, it is. Because remember I told you that that gene was to allow the cell to produce ATP. So the first generation, the gene is intact, so the cell is able to produce ATP. Second generation, the gene is fine, it can still produce ATP. The third generation, the gene is still intact, yep, it still can. But in the 15th generation, because the gene is lost, it cannot produce ATP anymore. So, the cell function is disrupted. In this case, it's unable to produce the energy molecule required. All right? And because the gene is lost and the cell function is disrupted, guess what happens to the cell? Well, you guessed correctly, the cell dies. That is the limit. That is why specialized cells, such as skin cells, oh dear lord, that was a mouthful, <laughs> um, they cannot undergo mitosis forever, or they cannot undergo the mitotic cell cycle an infinite amount of times. It is impossible due to the constant or due to the progressive 
loss of the telomeres. If the telomeres are lost a little bit, it's fine, as, as we can see in the first, second, and third generation. But once all the telomeres are gone, the loss will spill over or the genes will start to be lost as well. And therefore, it will disrupt the function of the cell or it disturbs the function of the cell and the cell dies off. So the telomeres prevent any loss of actual genes until the telomeres run out. And once the telomeres run out, then the actual genes are lost in the DNA and the cell will die. So if I wanted to visualize it as chromatids instead, instead of drawing it as chromatids, I'm visualizing it as chromatids, okay? So you can see the label diagram over here. You can see that every time DNA replication, every time the cell divides, the telomere is slowly becoming shorter. For the first, second, and third generation, the genes are still fine. But in the 15th generation, the telomeres are completely gone to a point where it leads to the loss of genes. So this is just visualizing the chromosomes, but in the chromatid form, their supercoiled form. This is a, a, just another way of just visualizing chromosomes and the loss of telomeres. So in summary, what exactly happens is telomeres are just DNA at the end of the chromosomes, whether they are in the chromatin or chromatid forms. I'm highlighting it in yellow again. They gradually shorten as the cell goes through mitotic cell division okay now so as the cell continues to divide as you can see here the telomeres are becoming shorter but the cell is still alive because the genes are not damaged yet or the genes are not lost as i'm highlighting it in the green color now but if the cell continues to undergo cell division the telomeres will eventually be lost and when the telomeres are gone the actual genes are also going to be lost within the cell the cell is unable to continue on its normal functions. Uh, the, or the metabolism within the cell or chemical reactions within the cell will be disrupted or disturbed, and therefore the cell dies. This is how telomeres prevent or the telomeres limit the mitotic cell cycle in a lot of cells.